My childhood was not a typical childhood. I was conceived in April 1975 as Saigon was falling to the communists and the Americans were about to leave and then was born in January 1976. In a lot of ways, it was a very lonely childhood because of the vision issues I had. Nobody understood what it was like to not be able to see like everybody else and to be excluded. You know, like at school, I didn't play sports. Even at home, my cousins would all go to the movies and my uncle wouldn't take me because he said, why take her? She can't see. Josh and I met at our law firm. We were both lawyers. We always knew we wanted to wait a year without any children, pregnancy. We just wanted to be young and married and carefree in the city. It was ideal. It was perfect. I had found the man of my dreams, tall, dark, and handsome. He was kind and a great father. We had two beautiful daughters. I just never thought I was gonna have this perfect life. There's so much that you cannot control in life. Being born blind, couldn't control that. Getting cancer at 37, couldn't control that either. But if there's one thing I've learned is that you can control how you respond to these things. In addition to kind of wanting to keep a record for my children and to keep family and friends apprised of my medical updates, I wanted to express the truth. And I found that there was a real absence of truth out there about living with this disease and about what it's like to face death. So when I started writing, I vowed often in my writing, I said, you know, I know this is really depressing and I know this is really dark, but I swore I would always be honest with you, my readers. There's a lot of anger and there's a lot of jealousy, there's a lot of bitterness, a lot of fear when you live with this diagnosis. Once I started writing about it, it was like I let it go and I felt free. I no longer carried that burden. And writing was my freedom, is my freedom.